Hello. Today I want to talk about uh, a book series called The Mirror, um, The Mirror Visitor, or The Mirror Passenger, depending on your translation. Which is this series of books by uh, Krista Zabold. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a French author, and this is a French fa fantasy um, reading. And I usually do not read a lot of fantasy. I haven't. I have not read all those uh, extremely famous fantasy series like I don't know, Miss Barn or or uh, the T Terry Pratchett one, which is I forgot the name. Uh, anyway, I have not read it. <laughs> um, but I have read like some classic fantasy like uh, Lord of the Rings so it's not like I'm completely unaware of uh, fantasy but I just wanted to let you guys know what, uh, what is my stand on this genre because of course my opinion might be biased uh, given that I'm not I'm not like well, all that well versed in the genre but anyway this is kind of a YA kind of thing, but I don't know, it, like, it is a bit YA, it is YA, it is YA, I guess it is YA, but I, I guess it depends on your definition of YA, because uh, some people have a definition of YA like Percy Jackson, and some people think YA is like a card, card of thorns and roses. Is that the name of it? But anyway, th those are very two different <laughs> YA novels. Um, this one is neither. Neither. It's not, it's not a stupid story, but it's not like a flu bone blow now. Like porn and shit like that. But then it has like some elements of more mature stuff. And... Um, let me tell you what this series is about. It, this is about a girl called Ophelia um, and a boy called uh, Thorn. Um, you see this image? This right here is an arc, I believe. Uh, it is called, at least in Portuguese, it is called an arc, which is like um, it's a floating island. And we have those those floating islands in all of the covers because this this world that the protagonists live in uh, was broken by God. At one day, let me let me read you read you an excerpt of the. Oh no, I'm not gonna read it it's in Portuguese. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know how to make <laughs> simultaneous translation. But anyway, uh, it 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 it. it basically says that there's a poem at the start that says that one day God got really angry and broke the world into pieces that's why like we have like a lot of floating arcs like this and people live very isolated one from another and each arc has like some some kind of um, special characteristics and special the people who live there have like kind of special powers and they have like a, like an, an immortal person that governs this uh, this arc and they are all like descendants of god and and like they are like the supreme governor of those arcs or something like that in like most of the arcs the people who live in the arcs they live for for this immortal person that is um, in the center of everything. Anyway, basically, our protagonist is Ophelia, which is a girl who who is from the uh, anima anima arc, and she and she has a power that comes from Artemis, which is the goddess of this arc. And she she has uh, the people that live in Anima. They have like powers like they can animate objects. So like they describe that the houses that we have in Anima 
they all have like life they're alive and their their doors are opening and closing and they get it and the the house get it gets angry when we don't clean it and stuff like that it's very fun and he, you know Ophelia she lives there but she she's kind of special she's a special girl because she not only uh, knows how to do that thing but she knows how to do two other things that not all people all uh, people in anima know how to know how to do it uh, which is basically like she can read objects um, in a way that not with her eyes she can read with her hands like when she touches an object she has the memories of everybody who touched this object like for the time that they were touching the object I believe and she knows their emotions she can basically live the moment that they were touching the object so like that is very important because if you get like let's see if you get a presidential uh for example if this is existed in our world if you get a, like in a presidential paper or some other important object like that and you know that a lot of people touch it and you can like um discover real really important secrets that nobody else would ever know you know so um she has that power and she works at a museum like uh studying uh, old stuff and like uh, to make the records better and understand what happened in the past and she also has another a power which is um, to pass through mirrors she can enter in a mirror here and come out at the other part of the city but she cannot do that very far away it has a limit and she at the, at the start of the story she is betrothed to a man from another arc which is a very tall man. They they really tell that all the time that the man that she is engaged with is very tall and he's very tall and he's very tall and he's very tall. You would think we were talking about, I don't know, Michael Jordan right here, which with how much they describe that this man is tall. It's like every freaking chapter there's like 10 mentions of how tall he is anyway she's she's going to marry this guy from for another arc from the pole i guess which is like a very cold arc and he has like some kind of like force power loki which is like he can attack people from a distance without touching them but he can only attack like people he can like he can Different from the forest in Star Wars, he cannot like catch stuff, you know, uh, he can only attack people. So th that's his part. <laughs> and I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this book. But anyway, what I wanted to say about this book now that I gave the synopsis is that this is a really fun story. This book is really fun. And uh, this book is really fun up until the ending and then this book it kind of doesn't um doesn't go well with those two it doesn't it, it's not the same story it's not it's not and this one i don't know it's just what what is happening here what is happening so <laughs> This story is very like low key, you know what happens in like Japanese RPGs where the first mission is like play with your cat and the last mission is like uh, kill God, you know, th th this kind of happens here. <laughs> low key, <laughs> this low key happens, which is like these first two books, they're very cool and they're like very war building and stuff like that and there's a lot of things they are like innovative that I have never seen, like a lot of uh, different concepts and for stuff that happens in this world, for um, uh, places that they go that 
have a system uh, that is very different that I've never seen before in any movie or any something. So these two books, they are very, especially this one, they are very creative and they are super worth reading, especially this one. Um, and they are like, you will love them, I guess. You probably will love them if you are open to to enjoy this story that they have here. But as, as you are going through the series, like when you get special to the third book and the ending of this one, uh, well, the, this part, um, it becomes about something else. The book's just not about this, um, this forced marriage anymore. And about like uh, having to deal with the consequences about the, uh, of this and having to see the difference between the arc that she came from and the arc that her husband is. Which is like this part is extremely cool because the author really pays attention to the details about like people from this arc won't know anything about this or will they will act completely different about X, Y, and Z, and you can see that the author really paid attention to not let it slip. At least I didn't, I didn't uh, catch any slips from the author. But like then the story it starts to become something else, and it it wants to be greater and grander than everything, and like it's it's not like it's an unplanned story because you see hints of things that happen in this book in the first one so the author clearly planned all this but like she could have made another swear she could have like gone a different direction I didn't like so much this grandiose thing and yeah anyways pretty it gets pretty crazy but you might like that. You might like that. You might be someone that yeah, I want the stakes to be high. Uh, no, I don't. I don't like this low key thing. I don't want like this politics and and stuff. I want craziness and ah. Uh, and if you're someone like that, you might like the other two books. But what what I would say, I would say, start reading this one. If you really like it, then you read the next one if you still like it then you give the third one a try if you think the third one is horrible then don't pick the fourth one because you're not gonna like it you're not gonna like it because the fourth one is everything that the third one is but like way crazier and way more i don't know doesn't make sense um, so if you don't like the third one, you will hate the fourth one. So don't read the fourth one if you don't like the third one. But <clears throat> if you are reading the third one and you think it's okay, it's decent, then you might want to try the fourth one, I guess. But anyway, overall, I think that this one is like a 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10. This one is a 7 out of 10, or an 8 out of 10, depending on the day. This one is kind of a 6, and this one is a 5 or a 4. So, yeah, it does not go higher. The stakes get higher, but like the quality does not. So that's it. But the characters are really charming, I believe. I mean, no, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say that the characters are interesting. Thorn especially is a very interesting character. And like, they do not always make decisions that you would think they would do. But at the same time, I can see how these characters could be uh, extremely annoying for some people like I like very much like Ophelia and I very much like Thorn but I can see why Thorn uh, especially her husband would not be anyone's uh, someone's cup of tea you know because he's very angry 
and he's um, all about like not caring at all about anything. She does, he, he doesn't treat people the best way. He's not like an asshole and a full blown asshole or anything. But he's not like the most charismatic guy ever. He's like he's really as cold as his arc. So yeah, people might not like him at all. But I liked him. And I think he does get better uh, as time goes on. And Ophili um gets better too, I guess. I don't know. She she is cool from the first book, but I feel like in the first book she makes some kind of decisions that I liked better because I thought they were um, extremely like against what a normal strong female protagonist would do but they were not like demeaning things you know because um, usually when you have a strong female protagonist uh, you always have those kind of um, uh, power uh, struggles and things like that where the protagonist has to stand up for herself and give a big uh, speech talking about how strong she is and she gets angry with some people and she will be like uh, well I'm gonna raise my voice and scream at you and be like oh my god I'm so much better than you but anyway which it might suit some characters, but like this character, even when she, in the first book at least, when she f was facing trouble, um, and she was like, man, you should stand up for yourself, you should, you should shut up those guys that are saying those things to you. She was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna, because that's counter um, productive or something. I'm, I'm gonna just stay quiet and go away and finish the situation without any conflict because conflict will only like worsen my position here so she like clearly thinks rationally here even though it's like you want to see her stand up for herself and do things and say oh shut up oh, oh fuck you you know um and normally the pro the female strong protagonist would do that because it's I guess it's marketable, it's, it's beautiful to see the girls stand up for herself. But not always that is the best uh the best approach to get out of any situation. So she takes the best approach in the situation, even if she has to like um lower her head I guess but like yeah yeah it's a, it's a small thing but I was very surprised when I saw that I, I was like yeah yeah female protagonist speech right now and she was like ah oh, nah I'm just leaving out of here let these guys talk and then and I was like oh that's different that's different <laughs> I know that it's not very cool to see and all of us want to to be that strong woman that can stand up for herself and say things like be against when you when you see people mistreating you um, and mistreating other um, girls and everything. But I I identify myself with this because I often am made fun of or people mistreat me. Or they like get super angry with me, or they say some really sexist stuff to me. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, like, um, passive that I like I do not like conflict at all. So even if someone like that I know, uh, if it's if it's, if it's uh, someone on the street like. Is talking shit to me, I will probably talk back because I'll never see this person again, so there's no reason for me to not talk back. But if it's like on the work or anything and someone talks shit to me, I usually just be like, Yeah, 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 yeah let, 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 let just, let me just stay quiet here, wait for until this is over so I can go home and this person will leave my, will leave my, my ass alone. And they won't keep talking about uh, this uh, tomorrow because if I get angry, if I raise my voice, 
person, this person will target me and will keep doing bad things to me um, the next day. So I always like to try to just shrug it off and go away, which I know that it's not the best advice and it's not very cool to do that because we all want to be strong and everything. But I like, um, yeah, it works, it works. It actually works. Like people just be like, oh, this girl's not gonna say anything. She's just a stupid, a uh, passive, and I uh, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be bad if that makes you shut up, you know. So I don't know. I I, I guess that was something that I noticed in this protagonist. And anyway, so this is my review. I I don't know if this makes any sense. If this is good or anything but yeah i um I'm, I'm mostly making these videos right now because i wanna i wanna be able to talk better in english because i feel like like my english is not bad but like i feel like i have a lot of uh, i have a quite the strong accent and i i want i want to get rid of it and i want to be able to hold a conversation in, you know, in wild pressure, because like when I'm talking to myself right now, I don't feel the pressure, but like when I'm recording something, I feel kind of a little bit of pressure just in case someone will watch this, which I doubt, but, but anyway, if anyone watches this, leave a comment, tell me if you read these books, I'll probably make another video about books someday in the future <laughs> and I hope I can make a quicker video because this is 22 minutes already and I hope I can stop babbling and go straight to the point but that's it these are the books thank you for 